This is the video clinic for exercise number 98 out of the Patag Preparatory Melodies for Solo Work. This is a real challenging etude, but there are some easy ways to negotiate it. It's not going to be easy easy, but it will be certainly a lot more user friendly. When this is used as an audition material, you have to think, what? are the judges looking for? Big word here, facility. Being able to play in D flat major. Sometimes your fingers don't want to put down that second vowel for the G flat. That's the a real missing note in a lot of the renditions that I've been hearing lately. So be able to play D flat major. Play scales, play arpeggios, do it slowly then do it faster. They're also looking for finger dexterity. This really moves as well as fast tonguing. Also look at the dynamics. Lots of contrast here. Got a forte to piano to pianissimo to mezzo piano to forte to fortissimo. You have to make sure that you have your dynamic levels already preset. One of the things to do is just take an arbitrary note. Let's take an A flat. And I want you to play a, pian a pianissimo. This is a pretty soft dynamic, but not soft enough where you're going to lose control. Your softest controllable dynamic. Then build your dynamics from there. Pianissimo, piano, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, forte, fortissimo. Make a difference. Don't play with one or two shades of the same or adjacent dynamics really make a difference. One of the things that you can do to help you is make sure that the opening is a real healthy forte. Forte is a full sound, really solid. This etude is going to separate the wheat from the chaff. Lots of fingers, lots of rhythms, lots of dynamics. I mean, this has the whole package in here. Now I do have some tips for a successful performance. With this the B flat horn can really be your friend. If you do use the B flat horn as I am going to show you, it's not nearly going to be as difficult or insurmountably difficult as you think. For instance, the first four measures you can play everything on the B flat horn two and three. However, I do recommend that instead of playing the upper F two and three, you play the, the, the normal, uh, just the plain trigger. One thing that you can do to help your facility is slow this down and practice this slur. Now I'm going to take it about 96 and I'm going to put the subdivision of the eighth note on. And I'm going to slur. Notice when I'm playing the dotted eight sixteenths, I'm making sure that my long note or my dotted note is sustaining through the second click. That's very important. <laughs>
makes makes for a real smooth transition between the notes. Practicing slurred will help you work on your finger rhythm. Now there are some fingerings uh, in addition to what I have already said. Measure 10 for instance could be all second and third on the B flat horn. When we get to 15, which is the opening to the fourth line. I recommend using the short tube fingering on the A flat. It's going to be a little bit more open and secure. And notice the, it's going to be the same fingering for the G flat too. Measure 21. You might want to consider using all B flat horn for the last two bars. If you wish to use the regular fingerings for the 16th notes, that's fine. Some people feel that the B flat horn responds a little bit easier even though you have some different fingerings. If you do decide to use the B flat horn down here, your G flat will be played one and two. So your last eighth notes is A flat first, B flat, A flat, G flat one and two, F open, G flat one and two, F open, E flat first, and D flat two and three. And then if you double time, makes it a little bit easier. That was traditional. That was, that was on the B flat horn. Be able to do both. Make a decision on which is easier for you. One is not cheating. There are just two alternative ways to do that. Now for the 16th passage, to work on facility and getting really fast transitions. I would recommend that you play this arrhythmically. In other words, decide on what fingering system you want to use. Then you practice with crowding notes. In other words, do it once going from a short note to a long note. <laughs> real fast. How fast can you make those transitions? Then next, instead of short long, do it long short. Even faster. Then you can put it all together and it's clean as a whistle then. Anytime you have a really difficult technical passage that's a real finger buster. Do that. Slow it down and just practice it. Short, long, short, long, then long, short, long, short. And you know, do, it, do it real slowly. Really get extremely fast transitions. Then when you play it up to the required tempo, it's going to be a lot easier because you've already practiced the fastest note transition possible. The tempo on this particular exercise is pretty aggressive. I feel that uh, the quarter note at 124 is a good tempo. Now that's, now that's really moving, but even though I'm putting the metronome on, on uh, quarter notes, the pulse really is that of a half note. Instead of going one, two, three, four, one, two, bum, ba, dum, ba, dee, ba, bee, ba, ba, so, so the two pulse is fairly relaxed. Then when you have the crescendos, in these dotted eighth, sixteenth passages. Make sure that the crescendo happens through the longer notes, not the short notes.
A lot easier to control that way. That looks about uh, as much damage as I can do to explaining this particular exercise for you. I hope these explanations have helped you and given you some really good solid tips on how to prepare this. Remember, when you are practicing these exercises for audition, practice them slowly. Don't rush through and if you're having technical difficulty or, or things are breaking down, stop, put the metronome down, maybe about five or six clicks more. Play it ridiculously slow where there is absolutely not going to be any problem. You're going to be playing everything that's on the page. You're going to be able, able to play every dynamic and such. Then when you can do that perfectly, two or three, even better, three times in a row, then take the metronome, give yourself a reward, bump it up three or four clicks. And if you are successful, bump it up another three or four clicks. However, if you are starting to make errors, take it back down a couple of clicks. If you can uh, do that, then reward yourself. If you can't, subtract some more. Practice methodically. Practice smart. Never think that speed is going to win the day. It's accuracy. We're going to see how well you can play this as written perfectly or as darn near perfectly as you can. I know that you can do this and I certainly wish you all the best of luck. Goodbye.